In this episode of Creative Intent or Fake HDR, we're going to take a look at Star Wars Episode 8, The Last Jedi. Hello everyone, Vincent Thiel from HDTV Test here. I hold in my hand a 4K Ultra HD Blu-ray of The Last Jedi, and the disc is actually playing on an Oppo 203 player, being fed to a Canon DPV3120 reference broadcast monitor, and also another TV right there, which I'm going to be reviewing at some point. Now, this movie is quite divisive, and I think the HDR grading will be quite controversial as well, depending on how you interpret what I'm going to be presenting in terms of the HDR analysis. So just like what I did with Blade Runner 2049 and also Mulan on Disney+, Plus, I'm going to be feeding the video signal through to the Canon DPV3120, which has an HDR toolkit, which will allow us to figure out the peak brightness, the max FALL, and other parameters of the elements on screen. So let's start with the scene here, which contains the sun. And if you pay attention to the frame luminance monitor at the top left of the screen, and also the waveform at the bottom left, you can see that the sun never exceeded 200 nits, which really sets the benchmark for what we can expect from the HDR grading of this movie. Because I think in real life, the sun can be quite bright. And to set the sun at 200 nits, which is the SDR range. Now, I think there has been some confusion with what constitutes SDR within the HDR presentation. So traditionally, SDR or standard dynamic range content has been mastered to a peak white of 100 nits. But in my analysis of Blade Runner 2049, I've been calibrating the LG CX or C10 to 203 nits in terms of the SDR presentation so that it can actually match that of the HDR presentation. This is for a reason because in the latest ITU recommendation BT2408, the diffuse void has been set at a nominal value of 203 nits. This means that the cutoff for SDR within an HDR presentation is actually around 200 nits, which is why for a like for like comparison, we have to calibrate SDR to 200 nits rather than stick to the old 100 nits. And I think this 200 nits change is fairly recent as well. Previously, when ITU first published their HDR documents, you know, they used an SDR value of 100 nits, but they found that 200 nits worked better in terms of the average picture level. So they have adopted a diffuse white of 200 nits, or well, 203 nits to be precise. And that's what we've been using. And in fact, if you look at the Canon DPV3120 monitor, it actually has a false color function where you can ask the monitor to paint any elements that exceed a certain peak brightness. And you can see here there is an HDR to SDR border. It is set to a default value of 200 nits, which means that the cutoff from SDR to HDR should be 200 nits rather than the traditional 100 nits. So by setting the sun at 200 nits, you know, to me, this signifies that the colorist, the DP, the director, or whoever is in charge, is not really a fan of HDR. They are fairly conservative in their HDR grading by grading the sun at an SDR diffuse white of 200 nits. But let's move on. So if you look at the next scene here, where Chewbacca is roasting some really quite cute creatures, the fire doesn't quite reach 250 nits, but I think it is the lights on the Millennium Falcon that actually reached close to 250 nits. And when you talk about Star Wars, you know, I think the most exciting thing that could be colored in a really bright manner would be the lightsabers. So let's analyze, you know, how bright the lightsabers get in various scenes. In this sequence where Rey is training on the island where she found Luke, you can see that her lightsaber didn't really exceed 200 nits. And 
if we go to the battle at Snoke's throne room where Kylo Ren and Rey joined forces well, I think that's a pun, isn't it? Join forces to uh, defeat the enemy. You can see that it reached 250 nits, but it never exceeded 250 nits in terms of the sparks, you know, lightsabers swinging around and stuff like that. You know, they never exceeded 250 nits. And then in the final battle between Kylo Ren and also Luke Skywalker, and Luke Skywalker happens to be Kylo Ren's uncle. <laughs> I mean, it's quite a complicated family tree. But when Kylo Ren is battling his uncle, you can see that his lightsaber, the sun in the background, nothing exceeds 250 nits. So I would say that this movie is quite conservatively graded. Now, whether you want to classify this as creative intent or fake HDR, it is not my place to say, you know, I really want to try and avoid using the F word, you know, in this video because of all the heat that I've received. But all I'm saying is the whole movie, nothing, even the brightest lightsaber, even the brightest light, even the brightest sun, they never exceeded 250 nits. Now that was peak brightness. Next, let's go and check the WCG or white color garment use. So by engaging the pixel value checker function on the Canon DPV3120, we first placed the cursor on the opening Star Wars title logo. And the yellow here in the lettering, immediately you can see based on the chromaticity diagram that it exceeded Rex 709. So immediately you can see a good WCG use here. And then later on in the movie, in Snoke's throne room, the red background, if we place the cursor there, you can see that again it exceeds Rex 709. So there is certainly some WCG use in this movie. So it would be a slight step up over the SDR Blu-ray, the 1080p Blu-ray. But overall, the HDR grading is very subdued, very conservative, and I think, you know, this is not going to be the only movie to do so. So if you're interested in other movies with really subdued HDR grading, which we're not sure whether it's creative intent or fake HDR, you can have a look here. I've compiled a playlist here. And if you want to look at some other titles which feature very well mastered HDR with good dynamic range and WCG use, I've compiled another playlist here. So I'll see you in the next video.